time to escape into the world of adventure. Time to forget for the next half hour the four walls of today and escape beyond the horizons of the mind to yesterday and tomorrow. CBS and its affiliated stations present Escape. Tonight, we escape with Rudyard Kipling and the two gentle scoundrels he created in his immortal story, The Man Who Would Be King. The time, sometime before yesterday. The place, the north of India. The man who tells the story, Rudyard Kipling. One Saturday night, it was my unpleasant duty to put the paper to bed alone. It was a pitchy black night as stifling as night can be in India in June. It was very still, save for the ticking of the clock above my desk, which seemed to shatter the black heat of the night as the hands crept toward 3 a.m. And then from the passage outside my door, I heard voices. And he must be here. Open the door. Who's there? Only us. Who are you? He don't remember us, Dan. <laughs> that he don't. How could he forget having us turned back at the Jodhpur border? Told the authorities we was impersonating newspaper reporters, he did. Wait. That flaming red beard and that bald head. Why, well, you're Daniel Dravitt and Peachy Carnahan. The same. Well, what do you want? If it's money, I haven't any. If it's a fight, it's simply too... Beastly hot. You can rest yourself easy, sir, because we've come asking for naught except some information. We've been all over this country, and we've concluded that India isn't big enough for such as Daniel and me. So we're going away to be kings. Kings in our own divine right. What? Aye, we shall be kings. We've signed a solemn contract, each to help the other, and neither of us to take a look at liquor or women until we become kings. Why, I've never heard of such a fantastic idea. But what is it you want of me? Naught but to look at such maps of Kafiristan as you might have about. Maps of Kafiristan? That's where we've decided to go. But don't you realize that not one single Englishman has ever gone into the Kafiristan mountains and lived to come out again? If you're really mad enough to go there, you're a good deal more likely to become dead men than kings. We shall see. Anyway, I don't believe you have the slightest intention of traveling a mile outside of Delhi. Then you should come down to the Serai marketplace in the morning, down where the caravans leave for the north. Yes, come down to the Serai in the morning and see then if we be liars. <laughs> Who will take the protection? You should not laugh at him, Saib. The witless are under the protection of Allah. Quite so, boy. Who is the fellow anyway? A mad priest, Saib, who has arrived only this morning from Ajmer. Ah, oh, yes, Saib. Come to look at my camels, loaded with toys to please the eye of an Amir. Oh, here now. Go about your business. I haven't any use for toys. These are wondrous toys indeed, Saib. Fit for a king of Kafiristan. What? Good Lord. Daniel Dravitt. Quiet. Come along. I've two camels just beyond the wall here. The blessings of Pir Khan on the gracious Sahib, who consents to look at the poor toys of a priest from Ajmer. Over this way. Where's Carnahan? Here we are. Permit me to present my servant, Hazir Mir Khan. At your service, good man. Well, I'll be... <laughs> Do you like our disguises? Do they pass? If they fool this crowd in the Serai, they're probably good enough to get you across the border and good enough to get you killed. Getting killed is no part of the contract Peachy and me drawed up. Although perhaps killing fits in with our plans in a different sense. Feel around underneath the toys there in the camel bags. What? Go ahead. Good Lord. Rifles. Twenty brand new martinis with ammunition to match. And twenty good reasons to make your death certain. Any Pathan of the hill tribes would kill his own mother to get a rifle. Now who would harm a poor mad priest, Sahib? <laughs> Allah protects me. Mad is right. Then so was Lord Clive and Rhodes and Bonaparte. Drive out the camels, Peachy. We've a long way to go before we become kings. Oh, hey, hop. 
As I stood and listened to the camel bells fade away in the distance, I wondered, wondered if it might not be a glorious thing to go to Kafiristan and be a king. <laughs> Three years pass in India, much as they pass in any other land. It grows hot, then the rains come, and then the heat again. Some colonel at a hill station puts down an uprising. A new viceroy comes out from London, and the paper duly records the death of a sultan in Rajputana, and the trees in the courtyard grow a few feet taller. Finally, time in its circle turned up another night much like the one three years before. Once again, I sat alone in the office, listening to the clock and waiting for some unimportant item to come over the wire from Europe. It was long after midnight when my office door slowly opened. I say, look here, you, you might knock first, you know. Knock. Knock. Good Lord, man. What's wrong? I, uh, you don't know who I am, do you? No. No, I haven't the faintest idea. Uh, but here, you'd better sit down, old fellow. You're in a bad way. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's a whole year I've been walking. <sighs> right here in this very office, we settled it. You sitting right there and giving us the maps. <laughs> you, you've been sitting there ever since. Three years. No. Oh, no. Why, a man couldn't change that much in three years. You're not Peachy Carnahan. Uh, yes. I was king of Kafiristan. Me and Daniel Dravet. Real crown kings we was. Just as true as gospel. What in the name of heaven have they done to you, Peachy? Peachy? I, I knew Peachy Carnan once. He's a king. Wears a real golden crown on his head. So help me, he does. Hey, he's dead now, though. No, no, no. You're, you're Peachy Carnahan. You must pull yourself together, man. Yeah, yeah. Pull myself. You, you've got to keep looking into my eyes. Then maybe everything will go to pieces. All right. Now tell me what happened, Peachy. We left the caravan at Jagdala. We struck off into the hills alone. Go on. Weeks it was we traveled, Daniel and me. First there wasn't no roads and... After a while, no food, but there was always the drums. Sometimes there was close, and sometimes farther off, but most of the time we could hear them somewhere. Oi, hop! Move along, up. Here now, it's no place to be stopping up with you. I'm fearing it's no use, Daniel. What's got into them? The poor beasts are done in and starved, same as ourselves. They'll go no further. Then we'll go on without them. I've not come this far to die on the side of a mountain. Wait. Look, Daniel. Over the edge of the rocks. What? Oh, men they are. There'll be a score or more of them. One goes ahead of the rest. And naught but bows and arrows. Break out a pair of the rifles, Peachy. Right you are, Daniel. It's now that we start to become kings. Here, here, and some cartridges too. Easy now, Peachy. I'll drop the straggler at the rear first, and then we'll lay a few at their feet. No arm to the one in front. We may need him. Now. Got him by the old neck. They are Peachy. Hold up, Daniel. Look at them. I flat on their blooming faces. The leader is come out alone. Well and good, and we'll go part way to meet him, Peachy, but keep your rifle by. Look at him, Daniel. He be as fair as us, with yellow hair. So he does. Part of the lost tribes these people are. He stopped. I await your command, O ye who speak in the voice of thunder. 
Oh, the Lord, Harry. Peachy, we're in luck. It's the old Afghan tongue he speaks. Speak up. Who are you and whence do you come? I am High Priest and the chief of the village of Bashkai. A journey of only a few heartbeats. This Bashkai, how many people? They are numbered in the thousands. There are more villages in the hills? More than a man has fingers and toes. Hear that, Peachy? Here's our kingdom made to order. And you, you're going to take us to Bashkai. Do you understand? I understand the voice of thunder that you speak. Oh, he's a smooth one, Peachy. He knows a thing or two. <laughs> What's your name? Mazur Khan Jagdalur. That's too long. What shall we call him, Peachy? He has a look about him of an old soldiering friend of ours. Billy Fish. So he does. We bestow a new name on you. From now on, you will be Billy Fish. As you command, I obey. All right. Put this on your drums. Tell them two kings have come out from the mountaintops. Two kings that speak in words of thunder so the earth trembles. Tell them two kings have come to Kafiristan. <laughs> you, Peachy. Damn you. Why be you sitting here in the dark? I've been thinking. A man has to stop and think sometimes. About anything special, Nanyan? Look at them, Peachy. Look at their blinking campfires are gleaming in the dark like the jewels in a crown. Aye, Daniel. You've done a fine job for sure. All 23 villages you joined together as one. Tis the army you trained to be thanked for it. Two thousand men with a fair knowledge of bearing arms. Some's a bit green at it yet. They're ours now, every man, jack, woman, and child. We own them, body and soul. Aye, we're kings now, Daniel. Not proper kings yet, but we will be. Sooner than you think, Peachy. How's that? Billy Fish told me something today that fair amazed me. These people know the craft. You mean they're Freemasons, Daniel? It ain't no wise possible. So help me, it's gospel true. He give me the grip and everything. It's old, the craft is older than the memory of man. And up here in the hills, they've been preserving it all these years. Why, some of the high priests know up through the fellow craft. But they don't know the third degree. See it, Peachy? They don't know the third degree. But we do. Daniel, what is it you're fixing to do? Do? We're going to be proper kings. We're going to get them... Going and coming now. I'm going to turn the whole country into one grand lodge, raise some of the priests to third degree, and for me, I'll be the Grand Master of Kafiristan. Oh, but you ain't got the right to. We never been officers in no lodge. Right. What's a king got to do with asking for a right? Oh, I'm against it, Daniel. It's no good to go fooling around with the craft. Ah, you talk like an old woman. The thing will work, I know it will. We'll make it a blooming ceremony. Regular aprons with the symbol and the marks. All of us, Peachy. The kings of Kafiristan. Everything is prepared, Master. And the priests and the people wait. Well, they don't have to wait much longer, Billy. Here now, Peachy. How do you like my apron? It's a wondrous sight for fair, Daniel. Made of white ermine skin, it is. And the master's mark with emeralds studded. The mark? You know the meaning of the mark? That I do. What's got into you, Billy? Not. But tis a thing that's passing strange, master. Strange and rubbish. Come along now. Ready, Peachy? Right with you, Daniel. Then out we go. On to the temple steps. We'll give them what for. Knock their blinking eyes out. That's what we'll do. Look at them, Peachy! Right down on their blooming knees and yelling their full heads off. Oh, it's a good thing to be a king, Daniel. The mark! Behold! The mark! This is a sign! The promised ones have come! Here now. What's wrong with the priest, Billy? It looks like trouble, Daniel. No. Stand where you are, Master. They recognize the mark. That great stone in the floor. Why do they turn it over? Wait. 
It's the same! He burns them up! You promised, Frank! Let go! Speak up, Billy Fish. What's the meaning of it? See for yourself. Look. Daniel! Carved on the back of the stone! It is the master's mark, all right. And the same as the sign you wear. Only a few of the priests have known of the hidden mark on the stone. What does it mean? The many who have doubted you were a god doubt no longer. And you, Billy? What do you think? I, Master? I think that now it is the time for these. Daniel! Golden crowns! Aye, how they glitter. Fit for the brow of a king. Tis what we came for. Here now, put them on. We'll crown ourselves in our own right. <laughs> Listen to them! You know something, Peachy? We come here to be kings, and that we are, all right. But blamed if we ain't a couple of blooming gods to boot, with a million people bowing on their knees before us. Well enough, Peachy. So it was gods you became as well as kings. But then, what happened? What became of Daniel Dravot? Oh. Dravot? I knew Daniel Dravot once. He's a king now, Daniel is. Where's a golden crown? Carnahan was with him. Peachy, try to pull yourself together. I, uh, I'll try. Now, you became kings, you and Daniel. Kings of all Kafiristan. He was a fine figure, Daniel was, with his red head wearing that golden crown. Kept himself aloof from the people, so to speak. And when he walked before the temple, the fair crawled on their stomachs to worship him. But what happened, man? Happened? Well, I figure mostly it was winter coming on. The winds were starting up. And the clouds was blowing down from the north. Oh, it could blow beastly cold, that winter wind. Hey, who's out there? That you, Billy? Confound it anyway. Here now, what's this? I, I have brought you food, master. You of the wire sheep with curry and rice. Up off your knees, girl. Bring it inside. Thank you, master. Uh, place it there. Hmm. Now, you're a well-favoured wench. I do not understand. Why were you crawling on your knees? It is a fitting way to approach the god of Kafiristan. What's your name, girl? Maruma Fenja. Maruma? You married? It, it has not yet been my happy fortune, Master. Are you afraid of me? You are a god. I mean, how do I seem to you? Do you find me pleasing or, or what? Your face is more wondrous than the noonday sun. And your look, the look of eagles. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, very well, you may leave now. Thank you, Master. Hmm. Marum, eh? Peachy! Peachy! Is you calling me, Daniel? Oh, the food's here, eh? Good. Mark that wind outside. Winter's about due to strike and fill the trail with snow. There'll be little moving about afore spring. Right you are. Peachy, I've decided to take a wife. But you can't do it, Daniel. We made a contract. That was till we was kings. Well, kings we've been many months now. Oh, but it's no good. I tell you now, I, I'm against... Against it? You was against using the craft too. But look what it done for us. Oh, but this is different. Billy Fish will tell you no too, the same as I do. Billy Fish, huh? Who's the king here, him or me? My mind's made up. Three days from now, I shall have me a wife. 
and you can put it on the drums and tell every blighter out there in the hills, the kingdom of Kafiristan is going to have a queen. Keeping her, Peachy. They should have brought her in here half an hour ago. I don't know, Daniel. How about you, Billy Fish? You put them up to stalling off deliberate like? Certain preparations must be made, Master. She's across the court with some of the priests. Maybe they're trying to hearten her up a bit, Daniel. She thinks she's going to die, you know. Die indeed. Why, I'm only. Master, it is against the laws of heaven for a woman to marry a god. I'm not a god. I'm a man. You know that by now, Billy. No. And I should not want to think so, Master. But either way, this can mean only trouble. I beg you to reconsider. And I beg you to shut up, Billy. I'm through waiting. I'm going over there. Master, please. We've got to go with him, Billy. And I'm thinking it's going to mean trouble. How many men can you defend, depend on? No more than 20 with rifles. Most of my men are in Bashkai. Then what shall we do? We shall have to make a run for it, I fear. We might be safe in Bashkai. Come on now, you buckling fool. Bring out the girl. Well, now, that's better. Here, girl, this is no way for a bride to behave. A smile now. And give us a kiss. Oh! The wench has bitten me. Bloodbuster, don't let them see the blood. Look! See the blood! It's not a god or a devil, but only a man! What is this rot? Master, it's too late. Mark Daniel, they're coming with knives. They can't do this. I'm the king. You've got to run for it, Master. Oh, come on, Daniel, come on. Come back and beat their blasted heads in. That's what I'll do. Oh, sure, Daniel. We'll be back all right. How much further, Billy? Uh, only a short way beyond this ridge, Master. Well, so far, so good. Uh, last them blooming drums are stopped. We're at the top, Daniel. A right good climb it's been. Oh, wait. Look. It seems the drums have come before us, Master. Cut off. No less than a thousand of them standing there quiet like, with them wicked long knives in their hands. There'll be no getting past them, Daniel. No. We are done for. Go back, Billy Fish, and take your men away with you. Go with him, Peachy. It's me they want. I did it. Me, the king. No, Dan. I'm sticking with you. Billy Fish, you clear out. I am your friend. I stay with you. You're a good man, Billy. Maybe come in now, Daniel. Peachy. Forget it, Daniel. I forgive you freely and fully. Then let them come. There'll be one thing they can't change, Peachy. We've been kings. Kings in our own right. Kings of all Kafiristan. Open poor Billy Fish like a blooming hell in they did. There in the snow and the rocks. Good Lord, man. But you, Peachy, you got away from them. Like no way did I get away from them. They had us for fair, all right. Strung me out on a tree. Drove nails right through my hands, they did. See? But I fooled them all right. Because morning came, I wasn't no wise dead. And then I made them think I'd lost my senses. 
I was afraid to harm me because I was protected by Allah. They cut me down then, and after a while, they let me go. You poor devil. But what of Drabbit? What happened to Daniel? Daniel? Daniel is the king. He wears the golden crown. But now, what happened to him? He's never left me. All them long months walking on the road back, he kept me safe. The mountains, they danced at night. But Daniel held up his hand and Peachy came along, bent double. I'd never let go of Daniel's hand. Not Daniel's head that they gave me in the temple as a present. It's with me now, here, in this bundle. You knew old Daniel, sir. Him that was a monarch once. Look at him now. have seen that we was really kings. I'll be on the way. You'll, you'll pardon me, sir? I let him go. There was little else to do. He was only hours away from his death. I sat there and stared at the bundle he had left lying on my desk. Stared as the pale shafts of dawn struck fire in the red beard. Stared at the golden crown, sitting too large and heavy upon the wrinkled, mummified head of Daniel Dravot the man who would be king. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson. Tonight's story, Rudyard Kipling's The Man Who Would Be King, was adapted for radio by Les Crutchfield and featured Raymond Lawrence as Peachy, Eric Snowden as Daniel Dravitt, and Herbert Rawlinson as Kipling. Musical effects were created and conducted by Cy Fewer. Next week, CBS and its affiliated stations invite you to escape in Operation Fleur de Lis, an episode from the files of the OSS. And so, good night. Until a week from tonight, when again we invite you to escape. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>